I recently celebrated my three-year anniversary of having been released from prison. That's three years that I've been on parole. Most inmates serve far less time on parole whenever they're released. Generally, in California, the assumption is that you'll serve one year on parole, a year clean, they call it where if you're able to avoid any negative contact with law enforcement, if you're able to not upset your parole officer, not turn in any dirty drug tests, you'll be released from parole at the end of a year. However, the prevailing wisdom in the California prison system is that California is a bad state in which to serve out your parole. I had people tell me that parole officers are just looking for any excuse to violate you in order to keep the inmate population numbers in the prisons up. I don't know if this is true. Frankly, what an inmate says about how his parole officer was out to get him seems a little suspect to me. But I elected to transfer my parole to the state of Nevada in order to avoid any possible complications. Unfortunately, because I am a California parolee serving his parole in Nevada, I am not eligible for that Year Clean program. Nevada has a similar program where if you serve half of your required time on parole without getting into any trouble, you're released from parole. Unfortunately, I was not eligible for this program because I was a California inmate serving time in Nevada. So I was told to just expect to serve out the entirety of my parole, three and a half years. It's not terribly cumbersome, if we're being honest. I think at some point in the future I'm going to have to do a video on what being on parole is actually like, and it wasn't that bad. I think it's something that any law-abiding citizen could do with minimal invasion of their daily life. Well, I got some pretty exciting news. I'm off parole. My parole officer contacted me and said that I had fulfilled my, do my obligation to the state, that I didn't need to do anything at all. I was off parole. It's done. This is hugely exciting to me for a lot of reasons. Uh, one, and I don't think anyone's going to be surprised about this, I, I have letters. I, I have friends that I made while I was incarcerated that I just think deserve a letter from me. Pretty much at the top of that list is Scooby, and I really look forward to being able to give an update on his life and tell people how he's doing once I contact him and hear back. Another interesting thing that I'm able to do is I can talk about my experience of being on parole without having to worry about it affecting me somehow negatively. You see, before, if I'd given a negative opinion about my parole officers, I would have had to be quietly worried that maybe they'd see the video and possibly there would be repercussions. And if I had good things to say, positive opinions about my parole officers, well, I'm just going to look like the biggest kiss-ass in the world if I'm putting a video online knowing that my parole officer might watch it talking about how much I like him. So I just kept my mouth shut instead, which in life is often the wisest course of action. Now that I'm off parole, I can say that I'd been, ex I'd been led to believe by inmates that parole was this cumbersome process. That your parole officer was all up in your business and out to get you and would never leave you alone. If I'm being honest, it seems like being all up in your business and wanting to know what you do with your days is kind of a parole officer's job in regard to his parolees. But in my personal experience, and I was on parole for three years, I had three separate parole officers due to the length of my parole, and I have more experience in this area than most inmates who parole are going to have. There wasn't one moment where I was treated unprofessionally. There wasn't one moment where I was treated with less than the rights I have. By that, I don't mean they didn't do their job. They wanted to know what I was doing with my days. They wanted to test me for drugs. They wanted the right to search my home and my person for weapons, for paraphernalia. And rightly so. That was the agreement that I made when I left prison, was that I had to agree to these things and let them do that. One of my first parole officers said something to me which stuck out. He said, I won't treat you like an inmate. I'll treat you with the respect deserving a free man. I won't violate your rights in any way. 
And you just remember that I'm a law enforcement officer, that my job is to make sure the laws are being followed, and I will do so. I treated all my parole officers starting from that understanding, and it was fine. I had literally not one complaint about the way that I was treated over the course of my parole. They did their job, they did it properly, and now I'm done with it. Went out to a nice dinner with my wife to celebrate. It was just wonderful. We took the boys and let them order off the kids' menu. And if we're being honest, they, they were a little loud at the nice restaurant, but it was such a good time. And while we were out, I commented to my wife that if we went home and left the house in a little bit of a mess, we didn't need to worry. There was no way that somebody was going to show up at our home the next day expecting to search the house and wanting to judge us for the dirty dishes in this sink or the fact that the floor wasn't vacuumed. I know it seems like a little thing, but over the course of years it does kind of wear on you, this constant awareness that you are expected to be able to perform, that you have to be following all of the rules and at any time they can inspect your life to make sure that you appear to have it together. After my dinner, I still had two questions that I would have liked answered by parole. The first was if I could get some kind of official document stating that I had discharged my parole. So if I was asked to prove that I was no longer on parole by law enforcement, I'd have something to show them. It seemed like a good idea. I was advised that in order to get this, I'll have to go to California and apply at a California parole office to get paperwork out of my file. I don't mind this opportunity at all. This is actually a great idea. You see, whenever I told my story about how I went to prison, the fact that I had been arrested and convicted for the murder of a child pornographer, I was able to put things up on screen to show that it was true, that I wasn't just making up a story. There's a lot of paperwork that was generated over the course of my incarceration that I love the idea of having access to and being able to share with my audience. So when I do go to California, I'll be coming back with a lot of paperwork. One story that I look forward to telling, and one of the reasons I haven't told it is because I wanted some of the documentation, is my involvement in the college program that has been set up in CDCR. I was one of the first 13 pilot inmates who were allowed to take co college courses by correspondence and I gave advice about a lot of the details on how to set up the program to the administration, and since then a lot of people have gotten their associate's degrees based on that program. I'd like to have some documentation, something to demonstrate that it's true before I tell that story. Of course, some things I'm just not going to be able to prove are true. If I can prove I was on the same yard as Phil Spector, but I can't prove that he owed me 20 bucks, no matter how much documentation I get from CDC. I doubt that they have a videotape of him talking to me in the chow line. Don't worry! I'll pay you back, I promise! Just not this week! Maybe next week, okay? That, that's not going to happen. Some stories that I tell are just going to be that. They're stories that are entertaining, that they are true, but I can't prove everything. The other thing that I would have loved to get from parole is to know why I was let off of parole early. I'm not complaining. I don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth, but what happened? It's possible that it's just a standard review. After all, I said that my three-year anniversary was just a couple days ago. Maybe every year they look at an inmate and decide whether or not he still needs to be on parole. Uh, possibly I had been on parole at that office longer than anyone else, that somebody just noticed that I'd been on for so very long that I should be taken off of the books. What I'm going to believe, the thing that I'm going to elect to think is true, is that somebody saw these videos. That my parole officer or somebody in the parole office was able to get a better feel for my character from watching these videos than they had previously been able to from searching my home or from drug testing me. And that they decided I just didn't need to be on parole. One thing that's always been non-negotiable about these videos is 
the little lesson at the end where I try and take the things that I learned over the course of 17 years in prison and somehow relate them to everyday life. Because in everyday life, we so rarely have time to think about what's happening around us. It all happens so fast. Oh, in prison, you don't have that problem. It happens fast, and then you have days or weeks or months locked in a little room to think about what happened. I like to think that I've carried over some of those lessons and that I get to share them with people who want to hear them that it makes all that time that I served in that little box somehow worthwhile, that I'm carrying something out of there. I served 20 years. I was arrested whenever I was 20, and I just came off parole. I'm today 40. That's half of my life. The idea that that chunk of my life ended with being rewarded for something decent that I'm doing, with being rewarded for trying to help, I love that idea. That is without a doubt how I want to end the story of my prison term and my parole.